In another news this week, Voltar announced that he'll be returning to YouTube. Reports are coming in that he's still a... Wait, is that true? Is Voltar back? Voltar's coming back! Voltar is back? Yeah, and... Yeah, he went away. Wait, oh, I mean, yes, he went away and he's coming back. And I totally know this because I'm absolutely subscribed and I definitely rang that bell. Voltar's coming back? No. No, is the world isn't ready. Uh, uh, Voltar's coming back? He's the wind beneath my wings. I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. Voltar's back. Voltar's back. Voltar is back. He's back. Lord Voltar, coming back to YouTube. God help us all. I'm back. Now today, we are going to go far beyond just installing the DC Digital or DC HDMI modification. As you can see here, this Dreamcast is pretty battered and quite tired looking. However, the system tested out just fine, and for all those cosmetic issues that we have, I've got quite a nice solution here that I'm really excited to do, so more on that later. Now we're also going to be servicing the system, uh, which includes the power supply. Now we have a cap kit here that we'll be using to service that. In addition to that, we'll also be doing a beautiful, glorious, brand new, never before seen battery mod using just a plain old Jane CR2032. Yes, you heard me right, CR2032. This option will not only be less expensive than all the current options, but it will also afford you longer battery life. And who's going to complain about that other than Retro RG Bob? Well, We'll also be doing the GDMU install, which is not really an installation because there's nothing to do there, but what's more interesting is this beautiful, absolutely beautiful 3D printed part designed by Greg Collins over at Laser Bear Industries, one of the best in the business, and quite frankly, if you have a GDMU, you really need this part, so we'll be doing that too. So, let's take this thing apart, let's handle all of the system servicing before we dive into the glorious fun mods, and let's do it. Do it. Oh! Oh. Good Lord have mercy. Well, at any rate, we're going to zip the power supply out, and we're going to start by servicing it before we get to anything else. Let's zoom in here, let's zip these screws out, and let's take it out. Let's go. Oh! Now the power supply is really simple. I'm just going to disengage the power button here and there are just two Phillips screws right here that secure this in. We'll just tap those out and we'll pull it out. Let's do it. Now operationally, there's really nothing wrong with this power supply other than the fact that it's, I don't know, what is it now, 21 years old? And, you know, it's seen some age and it's seen some use. So we're going to service it by recapping the system here. And also we're going to clean up all of this gunk that has sort of caramelized over the years. I think something at one point was spilled in the system. So we're just going to take care of that very gently and very sensually. And a little 91% IPA can go a whole long way. That looks pretty good. Now we have our power supply here and all of our caps. And I have a cap kit here from Console 5 made specifically for this power supply. You'll see this is a 7962A. If we look right down here, 7962A. So we're gonna recap this bad boy, get this done, put it out of the way. And we're also gonna do a little modification that will make this work just a little bit better with the GDMU and should drastically reduce our heat. So let's recap it, let's do the mod, let's finish the power supply. Look at that. Look 
Okay, looking good so far. Other than this nasty cap, let's just keep going down the line. And just like that, we have decapped our power supply. Now there are a few areas obviously that, that we talked about that are quite suspect. Uh, capacitor here, here, and here. We have electrolytic fluid that has um, seeped out. Uh, these caps, those, those capacitors are thoroughly well spent. And thank God that this board is uh, single layer, meaning the bottom layer is the only board or only uh, section that has solder resistance, solder mask, and actual routing. I would imagine that if there was uh, routing here on the top, we could be dealing with some serious rot, but fortunately that's not the case. So let's just take some IPA, let's cut through the electrolytic fluid and uh, bathe the board and get this off of there, and uh, let's get to recapping. Let's do it. Now to clean off the caustic electrolytic fluid, what I like to use is just a simple brush, maybe even a fiberglass pen to get the super abrasive action going and a little IPA. So I'm gonna start by just spritzing this with a little IPA we we'll would be working this off, cleaning the board. Let's do it. Okay, and I'm just going to look over all of our areas, and we are quite, quite clean. We're ready to recap. Let's recap it. Let's do it. Let's not f around. Oh, yeah. Actually, before we install this cap, let's clean this site just a little bit. There, that's all it takes. We're ready to go. Okay, now we have cleaned, recapped, and serviced this power supply, and it looks much, much, much better. There's one thing left we have to do here with the power supply until we can put it to the side, and that's removing a regulator that will help reduce the heat and workload 
of this power supply so that things run cooler and our GDMU runs just fine. Let's zoom in and let's talk about that. Now, in order to mitigate heat, I'm going to remove the 12 volt regulator, which is precisely what I'm pointing at right here. Now, this is required if you have an actual GD-ROM drive, but because we have a GDMU, this regulator really goes unused. And because it's going unused and there's no longer going to be a real load on it because we've removed the drive, this thing creates a lot of additional heat. So we can actually cool our system down simply by removing this. Now, there might be a few peripherals that I think are quite rare that actually use the 12 volt rail coming out of the AV port, but for the most part, you're not going to be affected by this. So let's just turn this upside down and let's remove this regulator. Let's go. We are ready to move on. Let's go. Now the next step in our servicing here is the new battery mod, which has never been seen before. So to do that, we need to take out the controller PCB assembly, which is this brown board right here. We'll take this out, we'll zip these screws out, and we'll move on. Let's go. Now we have a convenient battery holder installed here, so what should we put into it? Well, the stock battery is an ML2032. Now, this is a rechargeable unit, but you know, these are pretty expensive and they have poor capacity even when they're full. Now I've seen a lot of people use LIR2032s and these are the wrong voltage. So not only are they risky when they're fresh, but they have even worse life when recharged by the Dreamcast's much lower voltage. Now what I recommend using is a CR2032. Now, we can use these by first blocking the recharge path, which is basically right in here, with just a single shoddy diode. Now, pay attention to the video description as I'll have links both for the diodes that I like to use in addition to these vertical battery coin cell holders. So, let's block the voltage, let's install our CR2032, and we'll have a lot of good life on the battery with just a single charge, and guess what? When it dies, it's cents on the dollar to replace it. Not a big investment. Let's do it. Now we can very cleverly put our diode in position by just removing some of this component leg of our resistor here and putting our diode in just in place, almost like so. Now keep in mind, keep the polarity of your diode in check. Follow along. Here we go. Let's get started. And look at our little bodge. It almost looks factory. But it's that simple, and it's that quick, and it's that fast. Now, we can use a CR2032 battery, and the current leakage from this diode is going to be very, very minuscule. It's going to be well within the operational limits of these CR2032 batteries, so we don't have to worry about that. We just saved ourselves a ton of money and a ton of time replacing these things in the long run, because this this will last quite a while. Now this mod's done, we're ready to go, let's move on. Now the first step is to apply this adhesive backing material to the bottom of the DC HDMI PCB insulating it. So let's do that now. And the directions do say to be careful for overlap and if there is overlap just to simply trim it down.
Now the next step involved is to fully disassemble the Dreamcast, which we have to do anyways because we're losing this shell. Let's do it. Alright, let's just crack this baby open. And the bottom. Just like that. Okay, we've dressed the board down all the way to its bare body. Let's see what's next. Now, according to Dan's instructions, we're supposed to take some side cutters and remove the material here and here from this top RF plate. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, that works just fine for me. Let's move forward. Okay, I think we're done with the top plate now. We'll be working with the bottom plate here. Let's just see what the instructions say. Now, per the instructions, it would appear that we need to remove all of this material here in addition to this little nub right here. So from here to here, we need to segment that and all of this material needs to be removed too, so let's go ahead and let's handle that. Now sorry guys, my flush cutters here were not as sharp as I thought they were, and I had to actually take this outside and just bend this piece of uh, metal back and forth to uh, break it off cleanly, which I did a pretty good job of, and I just beat it back down flat. Now we have gotten to the part where we are going to be using our new glorious case. Let's just go ahead and pull this out and take a look at it. Oh my dear sweet Lord Jesus. If this isn't beautiful, I don't know what is. Let's do it. Now according to Dan's directions, we need to remove this screw boss, as the picture indicates on his website, so let's go ahead and let's just carefully remove this boss. Just like that. Now here's a really nice little attention to detail that Dan added here. We have a little jig that he's 3D printed and this is going to help us make a really, really nice HDMI port into the back of our case. So let's just follow the directions here. We're supposed to put the three holes down in the center. And one thing I will say, let me just take a quick look. Yes, one thing I will say about these directions are I wish they would tell you how many vent spaces you're supposed to move over. I'm just looking at the pictures and it appears that you want just a little bit of that third vent to be visible here, and over here you want a little bit of the fourth vent on the left to be visible there. So we have our three holes here lined up. Our jig is nice and snug in there. We're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna drill this out. Okay, there are three holes, and man, that was done quite nicely. Okay, now I think we're supposed to flip this thing over. We drill two more. Let's do that. We're in good shape. Now we're just going to take a file, and we're going to very carefully file this out. I might do this a little bit off camera because I really need to see this. Stay tuned. Okay, now, we've got a pretty nice dam hole in there. We've got our shield back in place. Let's see how we're looking. Not bad at all. Our HDMI port is nice and flush. We have a super nice, tight, and sweet, innocent hole here, and the key with filing is less is more. Take a little bit off and check. Take a little bit off and check, because once you take too much material out of here, there's no going backwards. At any rate, our kit is sitting in here nicely. Our shield is back in place. Let's get this baby on down the road. Ooh! 
Now we're getting ready to do some soldering on the actual main board and Dan's instructions inform us to remove R609 and R610. So let's go ahead and remove these surface mount 0805 resistors. Whoops, it looks like we're not quite done with R609 and R610. We need to remove the residual solder that are on these surface mount pads. No problem, I have a little wick here. I'll just wick that right up. Okay, that's just fine. We have this tacked in and we can manipulate this cable. Let's see where else we have to take this. Let's go. Now, I went ahead and tinned our FFC cable a bit just to help us out. But we're going to go ahead and line this up. And we're going to tack it down. Just like that. Okay, this is the final side here of the FFC that we have to solder to. Let's go ahead and lock this down, line it up while we have the opportunity. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and tack it down. Now we've got everything pretty well aligned and in order, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to properly work this cable onto these surface mount packages like so. I'm going to do some drag soldering. We're going to get sexy. Here we go. Just like that, baby. Let's keep going. Hey, here's our last little bit. Absolutely fantastic. Now let's just go ahead and review all of our solder to make sure all of our fillets look good and our joints are acceptable. Oops, and I am so sorry guys, I did not realize that my camera had died. But there are just a few little areas left to solder. I just follow Dan's guide. All the areas highlighted in yellow on the picture in his site, that's where you have to solder to. So I've done these two areas here, here. And we have this little cap here. Looks like we're going to be pulling from, so I'll need to go ahead. We'll need to put a little bead of T1000 juices on there. Ooh! And this little capacitor is not in the most accessible area. But we'll make it work. Just like that. Now I'm just doing a final review of our soldering here on our FFC cable and I have to say everything looks absolutely fantastic. Now if we wanted to we could solder an additional wire for the uh, DC HDMI to handle the button presses on our GDMU. I don't care about that so let's just go ahead and move forward. We have a few things left to do. Um, we have to do the in-game reset and controller hooks and that's about all that's left other than the little antenna. So let's just keep this train going. Ooh. Now, according to Dan's instructions, we need to solder two conductors. One to R601 right here. And another conductor to R602. And the final area we'll be soldering to is this little test pad directly above R201. R601 goes to P1, R602 goes to P2, and the test pad goes right here to reset. Let's solder those in.
Now, real quick before we move forward, I wanted to go ahead and get this board in place, and I wanted to get my flex cable installed before drilling my holes to mount and lock the PCB into the bottom of the Dreamcast case right here in the floor. So we can go ahead and do that right now. So this board will be secured into the housing. Fantastic. Now we have the DC HDMI kit properly secured down to the bottom floor of the case here with our two nuts and our two nuts provided in the kit right here and right here. And also if we just look over here, I've went ahead and I've installed the antenna for the Wi-Fi module so we can update this bad boy wirelessly. Let's go ahead and set the main board down into this and let's sort of get this sort of tidied up and back together because it's time to move on to the GDMU. Let's go. Now we're ready to set our main board back in. I've got our antenna mounted back here because per Dan's instructions, if you have a GDMU, this needs to live in this area when we put the top plate back on. So let's just very carefully put this back into position and I'll begin by just lining up the power or just the AV and the serial uh, ports in the back here. Just like so. Okay. Be very careful with your flex cable. Make sure that's not being pinched. Always check to make sure it's free. Which it is here. We're in good shape. Okay. Let this down gently like so. And we are in position. Just like that. And that looks very, very nice. Now all of our thermal pads here on the top are accounted for. So we don't need to worry about that. Let's just very gently place our top shield back into position. Also, you can see clearly why we made this cutout here. Okay, that lives in there just like that. And our antenna, very simply, we have a little adhesive backing. We'll pull this off. It's going to live in here just like that. Let's go. Let's do it. Now we've got a top plate back on, and we've also put our power supply insulation barrier back into position. And this is the point where I would encourage you to go ahead put some stuff back together here and just sort of test this to make sure you're getting HDMI output and to sort of run the self-diagnostics in the DC Digital menu to make sure that all of your connections are okay. Now I went ahead and done that and everything's working just fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this to the side and we're going to be taking a look at this bad boy right here. Now this is the GDMU 3D printed uh, little enclosure piece here that relocates the SD card into this nice little area right here. This is amazing. I love this. This is from Greg Collins of um, Laser Bear Industries. And it's just a fantastically designed product. And I'll have a link in the video description here, but guys, please support this guy. He creates so many wonderful things for us in the retro gaming community. He's a real asset. And um, we couldn't do a lot of this stuff without him, just to be perfectly honest. Having said that, this kit came from him. I have the complete kit here. We're going to assemble this, and we're going to be putting our GDMU, which you can get these anywhere you want to. I'm not going to really talk about that, AliExpress $49.99. You have these here, and we're going to be installing the GDMU into this little bracket that Greg provides. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's get this ready. Oh yeah! Ooh. Okay, our GDMU is secured in our bracket. Let's keep going. All set. Man, this is a really nice piece of kit, and it's come together beautifully. I'm going to put this to the side just to show you guys. We've went ahead and we've just anchored the board back down into place. I'm going to put in the power supply. I'm also just going to snap this into place. We'll zip it in, and we'll talk about it. Let's go. And with the front panel in place, there's just one last thing to do. Ready to rock.
Now we're just going to take our HDMI cable and plug it in here. And we're going to turn our console on and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Holy Christ, guys. Check out Gunlord. This is a 240p only game. It doesn't even support VGA. Yet the DC HDMI can upscale any of this to 960p all the way up to 1080p. Now look how good 960p looks. It's phenomenal. We're going to check out some other games here too, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Virtua Fighter. I'm not going to say much because there's really nothing for me to say. This is beautiful. I'm literally love juicing all over myself right now as we speak. So much fun. Well guys, we're all done. Now the Dreamcast turned out beautifully. Great restoration, great mod work, and I hope some good techniques. Dan, Kristoff, you two should be rubbing sweet scented oils all over each other's bodies. This is a beautiful piece of kit and you should be very proud of yourselves. The DC HDMI or DC Digital is no slouch. I recommend it to anybody. It's fantastic. Now I wish I could have shown you something that lives more in the analog space. But HD Retrovision has been working feverishly on their component cables that are very, very sophisticated and super technical. It's no easy feat. Here's a clip from Nick from 39 years ago talking about their prototype cable. We got to fill down a survey to tell us you know, what other products they might be interested in. So we've had answers from PlayStation cables, Dreamcast, which we already have a prototype for. Oh, Nick, <laughs> you are funny. Well, having said that, guys, I want to say thank you to all of my supporters. Those of you who like my content and subscribe to my content, it means everything to me. It's the whole reason why I do everything that I do. I just want to teach my skills and impart my knowledge so that other people can be empowered and they can do what I do. Now, if you want to support me in other ways, you can go to my Amazon page and you can purchase some gear. It's gear that I personally use. There are going to be links down in the description. I have a Banggood, too. I have some soldering equipment on Banggood. I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. If not, that's fine too. Guys, this was a lot of fun. Plenty of stuff coming back. I'm back. And we'll do it again next time. Take it easy.